So Mac has a program called or class called Longitudinal Placements or LPs. Can you explain what an LP is? Yes. In the brief summary of an LP, it's basically like a one or two day learning experience. It can be done over um, several days, but essentially you come in and it's self-organized by the student. So say I want to organize one in respiratory therapy. So I reach out to my mom and I say, hey mom, is there any respiratory therapist that you know that would be willing to take on a student for a day or two? Um, and like, what's the level of administrative work required behind that? And usually they get it set up quite easily because generally facilities are wonderful with learners and they want to be able to help all of the learners that are one day going to be working in the profession. Um, so I think they do their best you know, to the best of their ability, given the volume that they experience for learners. Um, and then you go ahead and you set those up. For McMaster, you require four LPs, um, longitudinal placements. And I mean, it's, I make it sound very breezy, but it isn't necessarily always that easy to get them. It's easier if you have contacts, but say you're coming into PA school and all of your family knows business or law, and that's not an area that, you know, you have contacts in it. It can make it a little bit more challenging, but they're, are sort of um, data banks that the program provides you that you know there's there's preceptors that are willing to take you on you know I know other people in the profession that are currently working as physician assistants are generally quite open to taking uh, students as well so gracious of them because you know everyone needs to get that start somewhere and it was something I always loved doing for massage even if people wanted to come in and ask me a few questions I didn't know them they were looking at the program and I thought you know it's a little bit of altruism in terms of helping your community and doing something that you don't necessarily gain a whole bunch of benefit for so the longitudinal placements are a great opportunity for students but I think students also need need they must show their gratitude and their respect for having the opportunity as well. I've had some pretty wonderful opportunities and saying thank you goes a long way to not only being invited back, but maybe having a job someplace someday. And what advice would you give to incoming students about getting the most out of an LP? Do your research. If you don't know about um, an industry or an area going into it, don't just put it on that um, teacher for you to then learn those concepts. Come prepared knowing what you want to learn, maybe what are some of the common things that you might see there. Um, even if it's a specialty and you have no idea what that person, you know, the four specific procedures they do, have an idea of what that specialty entails, what a, maybe a day would be in like that, and, and just what you want to learn um, as a physician assistant and take away from that experience. The one that I feel I prepared the most for, you know, I feel like I got the most out of. So, you get in, you get out of it what you put in. And what's the expected um, mannerisms or behavior of an LP student on an LP? Like, are you just a wallflower in the background? <laughs> Do you have like a little notebook where you're writing questions? Yeah. Do you just follow the PA wherever they go and then ask questions between patients? Yeah. How should they show up? How should they dress? Um, what can they expect? Good question. Because. In um, the famous words of Sahand, it depends. <laughs> it depends because every institution and every placement is different. So ask, just ask. That's all I do. You know, sometimes, um, you know, when I was going into surgery and I, I didn't know whether I was supposed to wear scrubs from that institution or bring my own, or whether, you know, because we were on clinical rounds that day, was I still supposed to be in scrubs or was I supposed to wear business casual? Um, you know, the surgeon just forwarded me to his administrative assistant and she was able to be such a valuable resource in some of those more of more um, sort of day-to-day -day tasks, right? They're not the specific surgical tasks that you're necessarily going to um, ask that person, but they can be so helpful in, in giving you background information. So use them as a resource for some of your um, more administrative questions like parking and what to wear, where to show up, who to talk to to get your badge, that sort of thing. Absolutely. Um, when it comes to doing procedures or being, you know, partaking in anything, it really is up to the institution uh, and their their policy. So, 
some places I was able to get in, grab my stethoscope and listen to different, you know, heart murmurs at, uh, you know, one hospital, whereas in another hospital, it was absolutely no touching, like, there's got to be this much between you and the patient. No, I'm kidding. But it felt like, you know, I needed to have like this buffer zone so that I didn't get too close so that I wouldn't risk touching the patient. Um, Because you want to be respectful, right? Again, this is an opportunity that they're extending to you. Patients are in extremely vulnerable situations sometimes, and you just want to be as respectful as you can um, with, with everything that you do. Again, all of these, not only are you representing your school, yourself, your profession, um, but maybe you might get a job one day. And we all, as students, are always thinking about that next step of getting a job. I just wanted to thank you, Anne, for having me um, on your series here. It's been a privilege and an honor, and I appreciate everything that you do for our community and everything that you've done for me, even in my first year so far. Awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate that.